Good morning. Got a pretty good crowd for uh, for this dark season. It's a beautiful Easter day. Good to see all of you here. Uh, sometimes I have to pause when you have a mask on and think, who is that? But it's getting better. It's getting better. Um, have a breakfast Tuesday. Did I get that right? Did you tell me Cracker Barrel? Yes, Cracker Barrel. Okay. Breakfast Tuesday morning at the Cracker Barrel in Madison. And then Thursday morning Bible study with BJ and the Fellowship Hall. They're, in the, they're studying the women of the Bible. And I noticed on the whiteboard that talk about Mary, the mother of Jesus, Currently. Okay. So we're studying the Marys, studying the women of the Bible in the in the women's Bible study on Thursday. I think that's very appropriate. Um, anything else we need to hear about before we get started today? Anyone? Anything? Easter. Doug told me to say something about Easter. So nothing says Easter like an Easter basket uh, full of Easter eggs. This is a special Easter basket because my daughter Christina made this basket when she was in second grade. And <laughs> she had a, a wonderfully artistic teacher who uh, who went to the trouble to do that with them. And these are very special eggs because they are resurrection eggs. Maybe some of you have heard of resurrection eggs. My sister Donna introduced me to them um, a couple of years ago. These eggs tell the story of Easter. In this, and you do them in order. The blue egg is first. Inside the blue egg is the little donkey that Jesus rode into Jerusalem on. In the uh, next egg, we've got the um, we've got the the silver coins that Judas sold, uh, betrayed Jesus for the silver coins. And it goes on through the whole story of Jesus and the uh, story of Easter until the last egg, which is the white egg. And when you open the white egg, it's empty. It was an empty tomb. And that's why we're here. Anyway, so let us pray. <clears throat> John 1, 12 said, but who all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to be children of God, who were born not of, <clears throat> nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. My Father, I can call you my Father. We are humbled by your love, your grace, and your mercy. Help our belief grow, our trust grow, our obedience grow. Thank you for the empty tomb. In the name of your precious Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, amen. amen. I'm glad to see an Easter bonnet. Yes. <laughs> so on this Easter Sunday. All right, our scripture today is John 20 verses 1 through 9, which is page 768 in the Red Bible and 1087 in the large print. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciples started for the tomb. 
Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from Scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks. 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 As we were standing up here getting ready for the service this morning, Cindy was telling me that she's in a Bible study that is studying John. And they happened to be right in this very section uh, this week. And there's so much in here that uh, we don't have time in a single sermon to get it all out. Um, she reminded me of a few things that I had, I've actually preached on before, and uh, I'm going to let them kind of sneak back in here today. Uh, and I'm going to read part of this over again to you, not all of it, but a few of the things I want to emphasize and, and a few of the places I want us to be able to look at more closely. Uh, but it says, early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, and the word dark is one of the things that she pointed out to me, and I had not thought about it this way, but I, I, since COVID-19 has had us, this, this pandemic has taken hold of us, um, I've been calling it a dark season because it just kind of seems like that's the way it is for a lot of people. Uh, we don't have a lot of congregating. We don't get to get together as much as we used to. We haven't had any of our uh, covered dish dinners, though I think we might not be too far away from that. Uh, this is the most people we've had in our sanctuary in well over a year. If you think about it, last year at Easter, I was doing sermons on Facebook Live from my office. And I got to thinking about it. I, I took this cross. I used this cross and put it, stood it up behind my desk so that I was standing in front of it when I preached last Easter. So last Easter, you saw that cross on Facebook Live. And, and it has taken us this long to get back together with this many people. We're having more people in our Sunday school class, which I love, because more people add to what's going on there. We, ha we have a, There's nobody in our class that hasn't made a comment one way or another on what we're studying. And so when all of us come together, we get more out of it. And Cindy pointed out that in their, their Bible study, when they were looking at this, it said uh, on the, early on the first day of the week while it was still dark, and she said sometimes you can look at that with another meaning, as in dark, as in everything hadn't been revealed yet. The light had not been shown on everything yet. I kind of added that part myself. But so it wasn't just because it was before sunrise that it was dark. There was still a darkness in the world. And I, I, I like that. I'm going to have to remember that. So Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone was removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the disciple, and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved. That's John, the, John the disciple, not John the Baptist. And said, they've taken our Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. Now, it only mentions Mary Magdalene, but there were others with him, including Mary, the mother of God, that were with her that went to the tomb, but it only mentions Mary, she may have well have been the only one who went back to tell them because we know that Mary, the other Mary, stays there. 
So Peter and the other disciples started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. Now, it's kind of interesting. It always, it really kind of tickles me. John doesn't mention himself by name. Nowhere in his gospel does John mention himself by name. But here, he, mentioned, he calls himself the one Jesus loved. So he's kind of, I don't know if you say he's bragging. Because uh, Jesus loves us all, doesn't he? Even the little children. But, so John runs back toward the tomb with Peter, and John gets there first, and he looked in at the strips of linen that were lying there, but he didn't go in. Then Simon Peter, who was behind him, arrived and went into the tomb. So, and isn't that like Simon Peter? Isn't that like the Peter we know? He's the, he's the impetuous one. He's the one who got out of the boat. He's the one who cut off the servant's ear when they came to arrest Jesus. He pulled his sword and cut off a man's ear. Jesus told him to put his sword away. But wasn't it always Peter who would venture out first? He's the one who goes in. John got there first, but Peter's the one who goes in first, into the cave first. Peter is the one who stood up at Pentecost and preached the first one to get up and proclaim the gospel of Christ to a crowd that large. And thousands of people were saved that day. So Peter seems to be the one who is ready to do whatever is needed first. Whether it's really needed or not, he's always ready. Now it says that when they got there, they, when John got there, he looked in and he saw the linens lying there. And Peter goes in, and he sees what's going on. And then John comes on in, he sees. Now, Cindy reminded me this morning. Cindy gave me a Sunday school lesson this morning while all y'all were standing out there talking. And uh, I've talked about this part of it before, though. There are three different C's. They're seeing this, but there are three different words for see or saw there that are used in the Greek. One is just like, if I look over here at the piano and there's smoke coming out of it, and I think, what is Joyce doing to our piano? And then I walk over there a little closer, and I look, and I can see inside there's a glow like from a fire. That's the second see. I'm kind of investigating it. And the third one would be, if I open the lid and I see that there's a fire burning there, for whatever reason. But the third one is much more intently looking at it. And that's what happened with these disciples. They went in, Peter went in first, or John looked in first and he saw what was going on. Then Peter went in and he studied it a little bit more than John had had. And then John goes in. And look what it says after John goes in. Look at verse 8. Finally, the other disciple, that's John, who reached the tomb first. It tickles me. He reminds us three times he got there first. He saw, verse, middle of verse 8, he saw and believed. But then in parentheses, it says this. They still did not understand from Scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Now, that word understand is the same understand that we, you would use on the level of understanding calculus. Anybody in here study calculus? John, I know, is probably an expert on it. Well, why don't you just embarrass him in front of everybody? <laughs> Those people at Georgia Tech, I tell you. Well, I didn't. I passed calculus. Thank you very much. 
And, but the understand there is the understand you would have to have the depth of it to understand calculus. So it says they did not quite understand from the scripture what would have to happen. It says John saw and he believed where there, I would say most everybody here believes. But a lot of people in here, we believe on different levels, don't we? We understand on different levels. And it means different things to each and every one of us. We all have different beliefs when it comes to, to uh, Christ. In Sunday school this morning, we were talking about some things that various people had different thoughts about and ideas about. Very valid reasonings and ideas about Jesus. Some of them didn't quite believe on one point the way I believed. That's all right. Because we have to reason things out in our own minds. We have to follow Christ with our own beliefs. We have to go to the depths that we need in order to believe in Christ. All of us believe in Christ at different levels and in different depths. We can't all believe the same. And what that does is, when we get into a setting like in Sunday school where we're gathered around a table and we're talking about something and this person says this and this person says this and that person sitting back there saying, yeah, now I get it. Now I see. So when they went into the tomb, they saw what it was and it says John under saw it and understood. So he understood it on one level, but he didn't quite have that understanding, that complex understanding that comes with years and years of study and investigation. John later on, I'm sure, understood much more completely. If you recall, John was taken up into heaven where he was given the book of the Revelation. Now, after seeing heaven, after being in heaven and seeing God sitting on the throne and seeing the 24 elders worshiping him and the four creatures flying above him, wouldn't John have a much deeper understanding of God than he had when he first walked into that tomb? That's why on the first day, just like the women went to the to the tomb. That's why on the first day of the week we should all be gathered here because as a group, corporately as a church, we learn more and we understand more and we lift each other up more and we have a combined faith that is much stronger than it would be if we're out there individually. That's why it's so much better today, this Easter, than it was last Easter. Last Easter, you were sitting there maybe in the dining room or the living room with a laptop on the, on the coffee table watching Facebook Live as I was trying to preach, uh, standing there looking at a laptop. Now, BJ would come over and she'd sit at a table on the other side of my desk and so I had a congregation of one to preach to. But I had to, I, had to, uh, I had to work on, do I look at the screen, which means I'm looking at me, or do I look at that little, do I look at that little camera up there to, on the top level? Uh, what would it look like to you? What's it going to look like to you when I'm looking here or I'm looking there? But now, today, with us all together, I get to look you in the eye. And I get to see who's nodding off. And I can tell many times, maybe not as well now with a mask, but I can tell many times when somebody gets something they didn't quite get before. Now you have that aha moment, you know, where the light bulb lights up. I love standing up here and getting to look you in the eye 
and see wheels turn. I love to stand up here and give you something new that you might not quite have thought of before. Just like when John went into the tomb and he saw and he believed, but he still had a ways to go in his belief, didn't he? He still had more to learn in his believing. He had miles to go. He had a lot more to learn. Then he wrote to us, 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John. And then the revelation. The revelation of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Many times at Christmas and at Easter, I mention the same fact. I have a lot of trouble separating Christmas and Easter. You can't have one without the other. Without Christmas, there is no Easter. Without Easter, Christmas was useless. We have to have the risen Lord and realize he came in the manger. Somebody cut the tree down to make the wood to build that manger. Somebody chopped a tree down and added a cross beam to make the cross. I have a book I love on my bookshelf by Max Licato says he chose the nails. You have to realize that it was God's plan for Christ to die on the cross. Then you get to realize it was God's plan to offer us an empty tomb to know that our Lord lives. He lives within us. Amen. 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 He lives within us. We allow the Holy Spirit to come within us to help us know how to live our lives so that they glorify Christ. He went through all of that just to say, come with me. Come live your life with me and I'll show you a still greater way. Knowing Christ comes on many, many levels. If you want to know more about Christ, call me, text me, email me, ask me questions. Let's have an ongoing conversation so that we can all get to know him better. And as we all get to know him better and we come together as this congregation, our worship is even stronger and even sweeter. Thank you for being here today. We have a beautiful day out there waiting for us. Beautiful Easter. And every step of the way, whether you're hiding eggs or hunting eggs, I've got to get that list of eggs from Cindy. I'm interested in that. That was a neat idea. But whatever's going on with you today, a lot of you will be with family. Don't leave Christ out of Easter. Maybe that will give you a moment to tell one of your little ones, you know what today is really about? Not just the bunnies. Not just the eggs. It's about a living Savior. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Wonderful Lord, we know in your plan that Easter would come and we would celebrate the empty tomb. Thank you, Lord, for making things for us so that we can understand them at least on some level. Father, help each of us seek more levels in understanding you. Lord, help each one of us study you, follow you, question you, seek you, so that we can glorify you with our lives. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Thank you for being here today. This candle did not work. I'm sorry because... <clears throat>
When I checked the candles this morning, that one was long enough, but obviously this one wasn't. I don't know why they're not the same. So it wasn't Thomas's fault, even though he's a firefighter and not used to lighting fire. <laughs> but uh, I'm not going to mingle among the crowd. I only had my first shot so far, but if you have any questions, I want to talk about something, I'm right here. Come and see me. Fathers, we leave this place today. Keep us ever mindful of your presence in our lives, of our living Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that he is alive today and alive forevermore, and we will live forevermore with him. In Christ's name I pray. Amen.